Back now at 743, a new book out today examines, among other things, the connection between the Church of Scientology and the entertainment industry. We're going to talk to the author of that book in a moment. But first, NBC's Harry Smith sat down for an exclusive interview with Oscar-winning director Paul Haggis, who was a member of the church for 34 years before breaking away in 2009. Why did you finally leave the church? I was ashamed of my own stupidity, of how I could have been so purposely blind for so many years. Paul Haggis is the Oscar-winning writer and director of Crash, and the most famous Scientologist to ever leave the church and speak out publicly. Did Scientology help you early on? Yes. Yes, it did. I think... um, It's like picking up any really good self-help book. You're going to get something out of it. How do they convince people to be loyal? It's just this long, slow uh, walk towards um, believing. It's the idea of being part of a group that is ostracized and hated. It bands you together against the outside world. But then, after more than 30 years in the church, the outside world came crashing in. Haggis began to wonder what his church really stood for, and for the first time, began his own research. I went, oh my God, is this really happening? He learned of allegations of abuse at the highest levels of the church from a series of articles in the St. Petersburg Times, stories of physical violence and involuntary confinement. Haggis was particularly shocked when he read allegations on anti-Scientology websites of children made to work 12 to 16 hours a day. It's horrible treatment these kids had. Terrible. They're made to work so often and and, and all day long in these these terrible conditions. The church denies any of this abuse happened. They say Haggis' investigation was a sham and that there is no record, no police reports, no medical records, no photos to support these allegations. The church also says it adheres to all child labor laws. When you left the church, you described it as an act of treason. Yes, it was a treasonous act. If you have an enemy who's declared himself an enemy, that's a bad thing. But if you have a friend who's then stabbed you in the back, that's worse. And that's what uh, they claimed I did, and that's actually what I did. In retrospect, Haggis says he was never a true believer. For his heresy, the church has labeled him the hypocrite of Hollywood and says he has not been an active member for years. Is Scientology a cult? Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. It's, it's, a, it's a system of belief that I mean, you've got all these folks inside this fortress who, who won't look out and won't look at any criticism and can't bear to, to, to any investigation and, and think that everyone is against them. How would you describe that? It's a cult. Of course it is. Larry Wright is a Pulitzer Prize winning author. His new book is called Going Clear, Scientology, Hollywood, and the Prison of Belief. Larry, good morning to you. Good morning. Let's pick up right where Paul Haggis left off. He calls Scientology a cult. Based on your reporting, is that what you would call it? I don't use those words because I, you know, there's only one opinion that matters about whether it's a religion or a cult, and that's the IRS. And they made that decision in 1993 in the face of 2,400 lawsuits from the church and church members. Concluding it is a religion. This, yes. Let's talk about what you found in your book. You say you interviewed more than 200 people. You looked at thousands of pages of documents. What is the most troublesome practice you say you uncovered through your research? The recruitment of children at a very young age to join their clergy called the Sea Org. Uh, where they essentially step away from their education, they're impoverished by their service, and they're made to work long hours, as Paul said on that clip. Some of these kids, you know, one of them I talked to, uh, he was put in one of these heavy machinery factories where they notch books, and he chopped off part of his finger. He was 16 years old. According to the labor laws in, in the state of California, he shouldn't have been in that kind of situation, he should have been in school to start with. You mentioned the labor laws. I should mention again, the Church of Scientology says that it complies with all applicable child labor laws, and it's a blanket matter, denies allegations such as yours. You also allege this continuing course of intimidation by the church for members who try to leave. Well, I've talked to, you know, 150 people who are former members, 160, something like that, and many of them have been harassed. Some of them have been followed by private investigators. 
threatened with uh, breaking away from their family, uh, not being able to see members of their family, loved ones. So yes, there's a campaign of harassment against people that have criti criticized the church or have left the church. A moment ago, you, you mentioned some physical abuse, and I should read a statement that the yeah. church gave us with regard to that. Quote, there is no record, no police reports, no medical records, no photos, no documents, no evidence at all to support these allegations, no corroboration whatsoever. I guess the church's point is, if there is abuse, physical abuse mm -hmm. going on, why isn't there corroboration for that? Well, there is. I've talked to 12 people who said that they've been physically abused by the leader of the church, David Miscavige, and more than 20 who said they've witnessed such actions and corroborate those statements. So there's plenty of evidence. Miscavige in particular uh, is somebody who denies these allegations. NBC actually spoke to three current members of the church who deny the allegations in your book. You have former members who say these three people, they were abused. These mm -hmm. people say, no, we weren't. How do you explain that? Part of the subtitle of the book is The Prison of Belief. And uh, I, a lot of these people are locked into the idea that if they turn their back on Scientology, they'll lose their eternal salvation. And they'll do anything to keep in the good graces of the church, including making statements such as that. Uh, as I said, the church has reached out to us and provided some responses. In, in general, it calls the book an error-filled, unsubstantiated, bigoted anti-Scientology book. It says some of the sources you have are admitted liars who were removed from their positions for malfeasance many years ago and who have changed their stories repeatedly. Do you feel strongly in your reporting that you have an accurate portrayal of the Church of Scientology and that you gave it a fair shot? I gave them the best chance. I asked all the church questions again and again asking the very questions that they're now trying to refute. I spoke to the people who had been at the very highest levels of Scientology, the people who had gone to the very top of their spiritual pyramid. These are the experts on the church, and the church itself tried to deal with some of my questions, but continually in a very hostile manner avoided responding. So I think we've given them as good a chance as they're ever going to get. Well, Larry Wright, thank you for being with us this morning, telling us about the book. We should remind everybody it is called Going Clear. And you can hear more from Larry Wright and Paul Haggis on Rock Center with Brian Williams tonight, 10, 9 central time, right here on NBC.